Good day, my name is Richard and a warm welcome to Two Tree with Richard, where we cover the South African school syllabus and native topics. If you find these videos helpful, please consider supporting me on PayPal, Patreon or buy me a coffee. Links in the description box below. Today we're going to cover strength of materials in six. The topic of this tutorial is helictical springs. Question three. The question is included in the video. We have been asked to issue a cautionary note. When doing these questions, please use the method I'm going to show you, as this is the method that is marked correct. Using your own method to answer questions could cost you marks, even though your answer and method might be right. See cautionary notes at the beginning of the video. On a side note, watch until the end of the video. If you watch the first five minutes, you will not gain a full understanding of what you need to do. There is no quick fix in strength of materials. It takes persistence, discipline and repetition. You can, you have to use these steps in order to succeed. Let's get straight into it. Okay, first things first. Right, our question goes, two springs are connected in series, are subjected to a load, with the strain energy in the springs must be equal. The one spring has a mean diameter of 60 millimeters. So, D1, 0, 0,06, and a wire diameter of 6 millimeters. So, little d for 1, 0, 0, 0,006, with 17 coils. So, N is 17. The second spring has a wire diameter of 4 millimeters. So D2, 0, 0,004, and 10 coils. So N2, N1, and N2, N2 has 10 coils. The allowable stress in the springs, now this is always. When you're dealing with stress, it's always shear stress. Hundred and forty times ten to the six. And modulus of rigidity is eighty two times ten to the nine. Okay. This is what a spring in series looks like. That is a spring in series. Two springs in series. Here's spring one, and that's spring two. As you can see. So, what we can take away from this is that the first spring is the mean diameter, which means the whole way around the spring. The mean diameter of the spring, which is the middle part. So here's your, here's your spring, and it has an inside and outside diameter. So here, in this middle bit of your spring, that's your mean diameter. So that is D. That is your mean diameter of your spring. So that is how wide it is around the middle of the circumference. D, small d is the width, is your, basically your diameter of the wire that you are using. So, for our purposes, alright, now we've got U1 equals u2. So, now this will be 4w squared d 3n over g d to the power 4. And exactly the same on the other side. 4w squared d to the power 3n over g d to the power 4. Okay, now we are going to eliminate things that are the same. This is the same, that's the same, that's the same. This is the same, that's the same, that's the same. 
So, 60 to the power 3 times 17 over 6 to the power 4. Six to the power four equals dq times ten over four to the power four. Right. So what we need is d to, is capital D to the power three. So this is times by four to the power four, and that's divided by ten. So we have sixty to the power three times 17 times 4 to the power 4 over 6 to the power 4 times 10 equals equals d to the power 3. So all we have to do now is cube root. We cube root, and we have D on its own. So once we've got D on its own, we have exactly D, you can put this in your calculator, and you will get 41,7 millimeters. So, D2, 41,7 millimeters. That is our first answer. Now, second answer. Now, number two. Number two states the allowable load to which eat the spring is subjective. So they want the allowable load. So there's only going to be one load because the springs are in series and they'll both collapse under the same load. Because as a spring gets compressed, it collapses. And then when the load is lifted, it comes back up. It expands. So, and when a load is supplied, it compresses. When a load is not applied, it expands. Okay, so we have question two. Tau is equal to 8WD over pi d to the power 3. Now let's get weight. So we have weight is equal to tau pi d cubed over 8d. Now all we have to do is put in our values for both. This will be d1 and that's d1. The next one will be D2, and then you add the two together. So, 140 times 10 to the 6 times pi times Zero comma zero zero six cubed all of eight times zero comma zero six. And the weight of this one nine seven comma nine two newton. Now all we have to do is for number two is just replace D and D. 
So this is 0, 0, 0,04. This is 417, and that is to the power of 4. Okay, this is 2, and that's 2. And this comes out to 84,379 newtons. So, the weight that this can be subjected to is this one over here. The lowest number. The lowest one is the within limits of what both can handle. So, weight is equal to 84,379 newtons. So, the next sum. Number three is remarkably easy. From question two, we know that the load in the ser on the series springs is 84,379. So, therefore, the stress in the springs, therefore, the total stress in both springs is 140 megapascals. So, that is perfect. So, we've answered question 3 just by doing question 2. Now, question 4, the strain energy. We need the strain energy, so U2 is equal to 4W squared D 3N over G, D, sorry, small d, to the power 4. Now we've got all the values that we need. We already have every value that we need. So, we're going to say 4 times 84,379 squared times D, which is, this is D2, so 0, 0.0417 to the power 3 times 10 all over 82 times 10 to the 9 times 0, 0.004 to the power 4. And now our answer is U2 equals 0, 0.984 joules of energy in the spring. So now all we have to do is because U1 and U2, U1 equals U2, so therefore for U, the UT is U1 plus U2. Two. So it's both equal. So it is two times zero comma nine eight four. Just one comma nine six eight joules. So U T equals one comma nine six eight. But there's number five and then there's number six. So number five, they want the stiffness, the total stiffness of the spring. So how we get that is very interesting. So S1 equals G D to the power of four over eight. D3 to the N. So all we have to do is we want S. So this will be 82 times 10 to the 9 times 
0, 0, 0, 0,004 to the power 4 over 8 times 0, 0, 0,06 to the power 3 times 17. And the answer is 3,618 kilo newton meters. So, S1, 3,618 kilo newton meters. Now, all we have to do is take this answer, remove that, remove that, and remove that. Otherwise, everything's exactly the same. 417 to the power 3, 417, and this is 10, and that is 4. And we are left with an answer of 3,619 kilo newton meters. Okay, now the formula to work these out is S total equal S1, S2 over S1 plus S2. So, all we have to do is S2, S2. So, now S1 equals 3,618 times 3,619 over 3,618 plus 3,619. And that equals one comma eight oh nine kilo newton meters. All right, now the last thing to do. They want the strain energy in the springs. No, sorry, they want the total deflection in the springs. My mistake. So U T equals 0, 0,5 W right T so all this just comes underneath U UT is 1,968 over 0, 0,5 times W is eighty four comma three seven nine. And this all comes to a nice little number of so you start writing eight forty six comma. Six four millimeters, and that is our final answer. If you found this tutorial helpful, please give it a like and subscribe. It really helps with the algorithm and to grow the channel. Positive feedback is most welcome. I enjoy reading your comments. Please use the comment section to let me know what topics you would like me to cover in upcoming videos. Be at peace, be kind to each other, and remember, passing well is achievable. Have a great day, looking forward to seeing you in the next video.